How does it go? Ring a ring a rose is a pocket full of Dendrobium hippicky blooms. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Blooms for You. It is so good to have you. Thank you for clicking on the video. So I started out with a little bit of a nursery rhyme that has a bit of a dubious background if we really, really dig into the history of it, but we're not gonna go there. We don't want to scare any children. But look at this. It is like the ring of fire, <laughs> but it's all inside. It's like a little Dendrobium hibiki volcano. We've got the caldera and we've got the lava, the hibiki lava, looking gorgeous even on an overcast day. But there's something else looking really, really gorgeous. Oh, Orchid Ninjas, check this out. Lady Chatterley, look at all those smiling faces. <laughs> yes, there she is doing exceptionally well still this late in the season. And we have two more buds to go. So anybody on my channel for the first time not familiar with this episode, it is in episodes like these, Blooms for You, where I dedicate all the orchids that I have in bloom, specifically to names that I have gathered, accumulated on my list, where I could identify anybody new in the comments section or anybody that I could see that has subscribed. And then when an orchid blooms, I go to my list and say that name with that bloom that name with that bloom. But huh, long story short, Orchid Ninjas and my Phalaenopsis corner Serbi variety Chatela Day, they belong together. And I have made it a thing that as long as Lady Chatterley is smiling and grinning away at me with those beautiful McLean teeth that she has at the end of her lip, oh, what a cheerful orchid, my Chatterley blooms for Orchid Ninjas all the time. You can become an Orchid Ninja as well if you join my membership. Then Lady Chatterley blooms exclusively for you as well. But thank you, Orchid Ninjas, for your support on my channel. I so appreciate you. You bring a smile to my face. You know that Lady Chatterley always makes me smile. So the two just go hand in hand beautifully. Anywho, back to Mr. Hibiki here. Mr. Hibiki blooms for everybody that is not mentioned in this video today. Obviously, orchids have their own rhythm and it takes a while for them to bloom. But believe you me, if I can see you, if I can identify you, if you're a new name, you go on that list and eventually there will be a bloom at Ninja Orchids for you too. In the meantime, Mr. Hibiki here blooms for everybody watching this video and not mentioned in this episode. To say thank you to you as well for spending time on my channel, supporting my channel. And while you're at it, before we go to the next blooms, let me get some housekeeping out of the way. Please like the video, I would appreciate that. And if you've never commented before, if you're not subscribed, Leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. Please subscribe if you're a private account. Let me know you're here, etc., etc. I would so appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much. Now, let's go and have a look-see as to what is in bloom and whose names came up in this episode. An OG favorite orchid of mine is back in bloom. This is Procatabola Golden Peacock. Finally, I get to see these blooms again, but they are blooming for Anouk Tansi, Asimona, Harald Gröner, Man Mohan, Barry Woods, Udita Kumuduni, and Donna Constantino. It took a while for her to get her mojo back. I only expected one spike, and then lo and behold, on a flushing day, Boom, there were two more, so for the first time, as a matter of fact, I have three spikes on the go. Two of them have six blooms and one of them has three blooms, which is far more than I expected because, you know, when an orchid is recovering, it can take some time to get it back to what it used to be. Now that it is back to what it used to be, it's probably time to clean up the root ball again. And I'm guessing around about maybe March, April, we'll just have to wait and see when the new growths come because the bloom duration on a Procatabola Golden Peacock can be quite long. As you can see, I have a breezy day. Yes, this is breezy, whereas on other occasions I would consider it windy, but this is breezy in comparison to what I have had recently once again. Seems like the winds of change are here and it will bring probably a drop in temperatures once they stop. For that reason, it was a little bit difficult to get some nice images on stills of the blooms, but I think I managed to get some together 
because I wanted to stand at a distance during the video so that you can see the whole beautiful show all in one with the orchid all together. She is not fragrant, but the golden peacock really speaks for itself. How much do I need to describe what the golden is about? It seems she absorbs the sun, she doesn't reflect much of it, and it just enhances that rich, rich orange color, which, based on the angle of the sun, has then different hues of color. I have to say, it is a beautiful sight. I took some pictures of her in the shade as well, and yet she still looks like three-dimensional coming out at the screen. But in order to do her name justice with the golden, she has to be in the sun as far as I'm concerned, and I hope that you agree with me. <laughs> Very happy to see this orchid back. It's going to be quite the chore once again, getting her out of her pot to do a root ball cleanup to then pot her up again. Been there, done that, it is something that I am very familiar with, not exactly looking forward to, because I don't want to be setting this orchid back another year. I've waited a year almost to get her back to what she is now. But anywho, for the time being, thoroughly enjoying the spectacle, and I'm just really happy to be able to say thank you via my golden peacock to Anouk Tansi, Asimona, Harald Gröner, Man Mohan, Barry Woods, Udita Kumuduni and Donna Konstantino for your support here on my channel. Know that you are appreciated. Thank you so, so much for being here. It is absolutely now or never because I want to so desperately dedicate my Catlia Maxima to Nora Yao, Shushu, Barbosa Bonfim, Sanders Palms and CNGT. Yes, I have in total six blooms, but some aphids also wanted to have a little taste of them, so my sixth bloom is not perfection. I have tried to take some stills, but I've also gone and taken a really long B-roll footage in the hopes that without me commentating and trying to beat the elements, because sometimes the elements will win, I wanted to show you how beautiful my Cattleya Maxima is blooming this year. The reason I'm saying it's now or never is because, as you can see, the conditions are kind of rough. It is not a hot wind, thank goodness, otherwise these blooms may not have held up, but it is a very dry wind, which is concerning, so I'm not going to wait for the conditions to improve. I have tried to do that for the past several days. My Maxima is super special to me, and to have her bloom out without a dedication would be sacrilege. And for that reason, it is possible that she has as yet to open her blooms out a little bit more if she gets a chance to do that because they still appear to be a little bit closed and not display themselves upright in a star-shaped manner. Again, I'm not going to take the risk to wake up tomorrow and have them look frazzled. They are looking fresh with the exception of the one where the aphids like to have a little bit of a taste. I don't blame them. I can tell you that I am super happy with the blooming this time around. The images show her off in a little bit more of a pale pink color, but she's starting to get her deep, rich, hot pink back, which I had in the first blooming while she was with me. She has been through the most horrendous spring, as have all my orchids, but I was very concerned for my Maxima that she would struggle with a good blooming this time around, as she did last year for whatever reason, and I had some very pale pink blooms, even though she had great light throughout the winter and into spring, and the opposite was true this year. So yeah, very concerned. Oh, but when I saw those sheaths crack open, I cannot tell you how happy I was to at least see that she had enough light to bloom. Whether it would be a pretty blooming or not, it didn't matter. The orchid is alive. I think it is a stunning blooming, and if my conditions were a little bit different, trust me, I would wait two or three more days before filming this, but I don't want to wait. It's a little bit too risky for me. Her rose fragrance is coming all the way at me, carried by the breeze. Well, let's just call it for what it is. It is very windy again today, but the breeze is carrying her rose fragrance towards me. I'm a meter and a half away from her. It is so delicious, so elegant. I haven't got the right words except delicious, 
delicate. And then there's the one of my favorite words, I call it divine, because that is exactly what it is. It's just divine. When you stand around her, me in my blooming alley, that fragrance, it's gorgeous. It is light, but it is obvious if that makes sense. Think warm summer's day in a rose garden. It's that beautiful waft of beautiful fragrance where you're sitting maybe at a bench or walking through a rose garden. It is just hard to describe and I do apologize if I can't get my point across or even if I'm getting my point across and you actually get what I'm trying to describe and I'm still going on and on about my Cattleya Maxima but she really is that special to me. And to see her like this with a darker pink this year, with all the stressors that she has had, I cannot help but gush to see that satin, beautiful, crystalline effect creating such a gorgeous show of her petals and sepals. The shimmer, the sheen, the shine, the different hues of pinks that it comes. It's like really having the pixie dust all over her. I, I just, I can't say enough about this orchid, to be honest with you, except <laughs> what I've just said and I could still go on, but it's not about my maxima. Well, yes, it is about my maxima, but more importantly, I'm just so glad that I can dedicate these blooms, even if they're not quite fully open open but as an update she's here she's alive and we'll have to do all the stresses again in the coming winter but it gives me a little bit more hope based on what I'm up against that she's going to be okay proof is in the pudding if it's going to be anything like the last winter spring it proves to me she doesn't like it but she can bloom despite those conditions I don't want to repeat but oh this is making me rest a little bit easier so my precious, precious Catlia Maxima, and with a Maxima thank you to Nora Yao, Shushu, Barbosa Bonfim, Sandor's Palms, and CNGT. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel, and I hope that you enjoyed this dedication because she blooms for you. We're going to give it a go or else I'm going to lose this spike altogether. And I so wanted to dedicate these blooms to Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents, who gifted me this Bretonia Shelob crossed with Rinconia Marie L. Right, on the other side of my tag, I have Bretonia Shelob Tolkien. Michael McCarthy made me aware that this is not a Bretonia Shelob Tolkien. It's a Shelob, but it is a cross with Rinconia Marie L. And yes, you can see what's going on in the viewfinder. It has been so difficult to be able to get this orchid into the viewfinder, seeing as I've had so much wind. <laughs> that is why I've already lost two buds. But squirrel, <laughs> thank you, Fernanda, for this orchid. Thank you as well for your support on my channel. I so appreciate that you are so on top of the videos every single day with a comment as well absolutely remarkable don't know how you do it i'm just so glad that you are doing it but you can see where my mind is going while i'm trying to make sure that the blooms stay in focus i want to try and gather my thoughts and on top of that i'm trying to stop talking when there is noise beyond the hedge so <laughs> forgive me for this dedication being probably a little all over the place just like the spike at least that matches. <laughs> Thank you, Fernanda, for everything, for your support and your friendship and everything that you do for me as a friend and a supporter on my channel. But back to the name. So Michael McCarthy said it's not a Bretonia Shelob Tolkien, it's a Bretonia Shelob crossed with Rinconia Marie L. I took that on board and of course, you know, no offense, Michael, but I do go and double check and see what is going on because blooms fascinate me. Why is one called like this? And you would think that it actually looks exactly like the other one. However, after minutia kind of studying the details of the blooms, and anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, a Bretonia Shelob Tolkien's petals and sepals, they go out in a more elongated way. They are also much longer, but narrower as they meet the column. Even though the colors are the same, the Shelob Tolkien is not as densely patched <laughs> in the burgundy of the petals and sepals 
and a little bit more spread out. I don't know if that makes sense. I find it super interesting, but when you look at this bloom, it is indeed a little bit more stout, more compact, wider petals and sepals, and the blotches on them, the burgundy blotches, they are almost, I would say, giraffe-like. <laughs> the markings of a giraffe, and I love it. It just reminds me of a giraffe's patterning. Pretty much Ancelia Africana-like as well, but anyway, I digress. So yes, I've been looking at Bretonia Shelob Tolkien blooms and the Shelob crossed with Rinconia Marie L blooms, and I say there is a difference when you look closer. Needless to say, though, without Michael bringing that to my attention, I would have been none the wiser. And if anybody would have said that's a Shelob token, I would have said, yeah, absolutely. Turns out, mm -mm, it's not. Live and learn. And that is why I love this hobby so much. Although it can be frustrating because, you know, finally you've got your labels together and then another label and another label. Nah, I'm done. I've left one side Shelob token with FFF from Portugal when I received this orchid on the 10th of October of 2021. Here we are a year and a little bit later and she's blooming for me for the first time. I am, however, very surprised how short-lived these blooms are. Maybe it's just my climate that doesn't allow for the blooms to last that long. I was waiting for at least the next bud to open and not wait until the last bud had opened because that always results in previous blooms already dropping off. It was impossible. The conditions were against us. So maybe it is because of my conditions that I've got two and a half weeks out of a bloom. Having said that, I've lost two and this one here is already on its way out. But my goodness, it is beautifully fading. I prefer the fading when it's like this, when it goes into a tan and vintage kind of old rose, rosé kind of color here, as opposed to when these blotches, for lack of a better term, start to leach into and become one with the color of the lip. This fading, I love it. The colors and everything is still pristine, but it's on its way out. And then, of course, I always had this one facing away from me because I wanted the blooms all to open nicely towards the light. And yet we have one again for whatever reason. Ta-da! It has to be upside down. Goodness me, I don't know what happened there. This orchid was not facing my blooming alley for any considerable amount of time. And yet that one bloom. Oh, typical. But... The orchid is doing well, Fernanda. She is doing very well in pumice only. The growth that is blooming is growing new roots, and I'm probably telling everything you already know about this orchid. <laughs> but it is growing new roots, and it's starting on a second new growth, which is also growing new roots at the same time. So talk about vigor, and everything is going according to plan, with the exception of this flipping wind. But it's better to show some bobbing color that goes in and out of focus to say thank you to you, Fernanda, as opposed to saying, Fernanda, look, she bloomed. I couldn't film her, but thank you anyways. <laughs> At least I hope, I hope my message of gratitude comes across. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Not just for the orchid, but for everything else. I feel as though I'm going to have to speak very, very quickly in order to keep this Tolumnia spike in focus while I say thank you to Angel Bass, Bending the Spine, July Legaspi, Hung Fon, and the reason I should speak fast as I feel is because here we go, here we go, is she going to turn? <laughs> It's been quite windy recently, and this Tolumnia spike should have been dedicated a couple of weeks ago because she was looking beautiful and some buds were still open. But the conditions were such that there is no way I could film a Tolumnia spike. It was far too windy. I have taken some stills in case the viewfinder is going to struggle focusing on that spike and we'll be interchanging some images so that you can see the blooms a little bit closer and probably not get dizzy by the activity on the screen. <laughs> My Tolumnias have been through a lot and uh, a lot meaning scale attack. Some of them are pulling through marvelously and some are not. This one is an in-between candidate. So after dedicating these blooms, this spike is going to be cut off for the sake and welfare of the orchid. 
Meanwhile, considering that the scale has tried to do a number on my Tolumnias, the fact that she grew this massive spike is quite impressive. It in itself is 40 centimeters long and has probably 11 blooms. I am dedicating them to Angel Bass, Bending the Spine, July Legaspi, Kung Fon, to say thank you to all of you for your support on my channel via my Tolumnia, no ID, but she has two names, <laughs> one of which is what I've made up so that I could recognize her and remember her when she's not in bloom, and that is Fuchsia with white necklace. <laughs> the detail around the upper part of the lip reminds me of a dainty little pearl necklace, so that I do remember, so if she's out of bloom, I've got her checked. The other name was provided by Michael McCarthy. <laughs> who called her, and I've put this on my tag, I don't know what it is, but I like it. So <laughs> I found that so endearing, I thought, yeah, same here. And that name went onto the tag as well. So thank you for this very special identification, Michael. You always do such a great job in discovering the fact that orchids aren't what the labels say, so your name went on the tag. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Anyway, the orchid as such is doing well ish although the spike impresses me i am happy to have it i'm also happy to get rid of it because the scale is still trying to get at the blooms now and i could see a little bit of scale on the back of a bloom a young one and that means that at least the plant is protected because they need to wander up to the spike i was going to show it to you but it actually just fell off only one that i could identify on this spike the fans are looking dehydrated and that is the point where I'm saying, yeah, it's not happening. And when I say fans, I actually only have two. I have other Tolumnias, they have more fans, they're holding out much, much better. Considering that the fans look a little shriveled, it is high noon to get the spike off. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to get at least some respite from the breeze. There's no way I didn't want to dedicate these. So. I hope I'm not too late in cutting the spike off and that next year we're going to see these blooms again. And one more time, thank you so much for your support on my channel. Angel Bass, Bending the Spine, July Legaspi, Hang Fon, my funky named, Tolumnia Fuchsia with White Necklace. I don't know what it is, but I like it. She blooms for you. And I want you to know that your support on my channel is very, very much appreciated. Shall we dance? Yinzu orchids and ADD. Here is your Oncidopsis, sweet sugar in bloom. And yes, this spike is dedicated to you. And now I'm looking at this little black thing here. Get off my bloom. I did a big inspection and of course I just squashed it on the lip. I did a massive inspection prior to make sure the blooms were perfect for you in so I mean I'm not gonna ask for your dance card with a dirty dress, right? <laughs> there are no dancing ladies on my patio here today. Well, we've got a little bit of a sway going. Just a little bit of a sway. We've got a tiny breeze. Can you believe it? I consider this wind still. <laughs> just as well because oh my goodness at least we can appreciate the blooms properly and I don't have to go trying to find the focus or let's just say my camera doesn't have to and you can see she's still on her mount oh this mount is gorgeous and the reason she is still on the mount is because she lives in the deep south with the big and great goids they are all helping each other out when it comes to humidity not drying out too quickly etc and she has a lot a lot of light there even though not direct sun isn't it amazing i am so happy i'm able to maintain this mount it is gorgeous i haven't even said thank you to you Inse. i have dedicated the spike to you but thank you bedankt for your support on the channel for gifting me this amazing orchid and I cannot tell you how pleased I am to see the spike. Now, this spike is growing from a growth that you grew, so I am not going to take credit for it. I have as yet to bloom this orchid from a growth that I grew, so it may just have been bad timing that you sent it to me thinking you can't bloom it, but uh, 
goodness me, at least I can compensate a little bit and say these are your blooms. Can I, you know, not only yours because that bulb was grown by you, but they're yours because I want to say thank you. <laughs> I'm babbling. I'm just so, so happy that they're here and I love the color. And so do the ants. So I've been fussing over her like a praying mantis, making sure that the ants don't drop their aphids on her because, you know, blooms for you, Insa orchids and ADD. There is a new growth, however, that she grew in my care. That's this one right here. So this one made it through without burning, without getting chewed. It's looking wonderful. And uh, no, I can't see a spike. <laughs> of course, now you're kind of like looking in between the pseudobulbs and the leaves, like, will you, will you? You know, just that one more touch of color before the horrible darkness sets in. But anyway, Yin, so what can I say except bedankt. Thank you for the orchid and thank you for your support on my channel. Oncidopsis Sweet Sugar blooms for you. There are a couple of orchids in my collection I'm going to have to buy a separate hard drive for. One of them is my Stan the Man and the other one is Dendrobium hibiki. Even though hibiki has long-lasting blooms, because Stan has short-lasting blooms, I have to tell you I'm taking pictures and pictures and pictures. It's as if I see the two of them again for the first time every time they bloom. It's just remarkable. But anyway, a little bit of a close-up of this amazing color combination. The only thing missing is that if we could have a teeny tiny little bit of sun, we could appreciate the sparkles, the pixie dust on the petals and sepals. But then I would have to put up a warning sign, please do not adjust your set or put on your shades. Anyway, it gets a bit complicated. This is just amazing. So, ah, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate having you here. Thank you for all your support, past, present and future. Wishing you a beautiful day from an overcast Spain, but it comes with a condition that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.